Welcome to the 2023 Electrified GV70 All-Wheel Drive Prestige. Yes, kind of a strange name, but basically this is a GV70 turned electric. Now this is not the EGMP platform we see in Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, but it does have some of those components basically put into a gasoline vehicle with the same battery pack, same front and rear motors. There's gonna be a lot of testing over on out of spec reviews, but today we're talking build quality because Genesis is really trying to get into this luxury market competing with Audi, BMW, and Mercedes. But this particular vehicle, I'm not sure is quite luxury, but it is premium. Welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Let's jump into it. Well, this is my first time with a Genesis product, and I gotta say, first impressions, really pretty high. In all honesty, I kinda didn't really have much expectations. I've never really researched the brand. In all honesty, I've not seen much online. Um, kind of a car that goes under the radar, if you will. But I think this car is really compelling for quite a few reasons. It is not, in my opinion, luxury, but it is very premium. And I think the price really dictates that. So this particular car comes in at $74,350. That has the prestige pack, a $6,800 option, which I think at that price point, just spend the money, get the nice leather seats, get the, you know, the nice headliner in there, a better sound system. I think you won't regret that. So what this car does is it sits in between a Model Y, which in my opinion, this thing way nicer. Obviously you don't have the Tesla supercharging network, but this thing feels way nicer than a Model Y. Does it feel as nice as its more expensive competitors, say Audi e-tron, BMW iX? In my opinion, no. And I think we'll talk a lot about that diving into the interior. So my focus today is to really talk about exterior build quality, fit and finish, and really more importantly, talk about the interior. Because I think there's a lot of great things in the interior and a lot of not so great things. So we'll get into that. One thing I do want to note is I've researched this car a little bit and people are saying there is quite big ADMs on these cars, between five to $10,000. Now I'm not speaking for the whole country. I'm sure you can go find a dealership that doesn't have ADMs or markups on their vehicles, but that's just what I'm hearing. So keep that in mind if you're looking to get into a Genesis. Now, I personally find this car to be extremely good looking. I think it kind of flies under the radar. Interesting to know on this particular car, four color options, black, silver, this gray, and a matte gray. So very boring colors, very under the radar, but that's kind of nice, if you will. No flashy bright red vehicles, but man, I just think this thing looks awesome. I personally think it'd look a heck of a lot better without chrome on it, but yeah, really do not mind the styling at all. I think it looks pretty darn nice. So let's first start off on the exterior, talking build quality, fit and finish. And this being an electric GV70, I wanna talk about the charge port. As you notice, I kind of walked around the vehicle here, no charge ports as you can see, and this thing is hidden. So you see this huge grill here, and all of a sudden you start looking at the spot where it says G here, you press to the right of that, and here is your charge port. Now, a couple of things here I wanna talk about. In my opinion, weird charging location with a huge charge port. This thing sticks off probably a foot from the bumper. If you have a garage that's a little bit short, this may be a serious issue that you need to consider if you're trying to level two charge your vehicle at home because this sticking out so far could be into a wall. You could walk by and smack it. Now, this operation, in my opinion, doesn't feel great. It gets to about here and then gets really grabby and you kind of have to shove it. You can see in this area where it's starting to rub some plastic off. I don't love that. What I also don't love here is these charge port covers. These are plasticky. They feel like crap. They just dangle on the front of the car. I'm sorry, that not a great, great implementation. But I gotta say for uniqueness, for pulling that, you know, out of just having this huge gas cap cover or charge port cover, I think this is one of the coolest implementations. Love how they've done the camera design. Just a very sleek vehicle. And I think it's really, really nice. 
Now the hood here, really interesting hood. It's somewhat of a clamshell, and as you can see, the hood actually rolls over here. I originally looked at this and go, ooh, that's kind of strange, and why I say that, if you'll notice here, this is getting really tight. I have a feeling that over time, as this hood sinks down, this will make contact at some point, and I think it's only on this side. Now over here, this is popped out quite a bit. So I think there's a little bit of fitment issues going on there. We'll see how much more we can find as we move around the vehicle. Really interesting hood line as it goes here, basically just coming up flush here. I think it looks pretty nice. One thing I have to note on this car that I've been noticing as I've spent a little bit of time with it, the paint on this thing does not feel nice. I'm not gonna be doing my normal full paint readings on this. This is a press vehicle, so polishing may have happened, other things may have happened, so I don't think it's really needed on this particular vehicle, but it just looks hazy and dull. You can see areas like in here, and then look right here before the mirror. It just looks, it almost looks matte, if you will, but it's still shiny. It just, I keep finding these areas around the car, and yeah, really doesn't look that nice. It comes through on camera a heck of a lot better than it does in person. So yeah, really, really, I don't know, not impressed with that. Now I think a paint correction could probably get a lot of that texturing out, but as far as orange peel, you know, compared to something like this BMW i4 back here, this thing really doesn't look that good. And it's funny to note, these cars are, you know, a little bit in the same price range. This one's got some crazy options on it. But yeah, really not loving the paint as we go. Body lines here on the hood though, man, these fit really nice. Now you've got some gloss black here. Interesting to note, there is hardly any gloss black on this car. You've got a little bit here and a little bit here on your B and C pillars. I love that as a detailer. That's how cars should be. My opinion though, this chrome needs to go. Moving along the door, this thing, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This is an area that I always look at on cars because Manufacturers have so many issues with getting these things straight on. And this looks really, really nice and tight here. Back here looks fantastic as well. Interesting how this body protrudes out in this area. But yeah, look at all the gaskets up here. Man, this thing looks pretty darn nice. We've got door handles here that do not scream electric car. And I'm kind of starting to like those a little bit instead of having you know the Model 3 door handles on my personal car. I think they're fine. Now opening the door feels very nice and very premium door shut on the front. How about the rear here? Yeah, nice bassy thud in there. Really don't get a tin can vibe whatsoever. Feels spectacular. This fender to door alignment here, almost perfect all the way down. Really, really tight. I like this trim that they've done here, how tight they've given it and how it looks. You know, on Model Y, this has been an area that I really don't like with their plastic trim. It gets warped, it never fits right, it looks terrible. So yeah, really stepping up the game. If I'm being very, very picky down here, this bottom rocker panel, this piece sticks out a little bit. That's being ultra nitpicky. This one looks a little bit better, but as you can see, the door sticks out ever so slightly. I think that could be snugged up a bit, but yeah. Really looking good. I like how this door flows in here. This all fits fantastic, really good body shut lines here. And overall, getting pretty impressed here. Now I am noticing, as I talk about on the Model Ys, like I just mentioned, really tight gap here. And you'll notice this plastic piece, how it kind of expands out here. End of the world, absolutely not, but wanted to make a note of that. Around the back, very simple design. I'm glad Genesis did not try and make this all gloss black like a lot of companies would to kind of give it that depth in there. I really like this being all body colored. We've got a nice piece of aluminum back here. Again, I think this is a very classy looking vehicle. It just really looks quite good in my opinion. Moving down here, body lines look good. A little bit of misalignment here on this tail light. You can see as it protrudes out, that's being super nitpicky once again but that's what we're here to do. This side looks quite a bit better as it moves all the way down. Speaking of the rear deck lid, interesting place for a opener. Now, I was originally kind of fumbling down here trying to find it, 
And then I looked up here, very reminiscent to how Porsche in their Macan does that on the wiper. Really nice area there. We've got tons of room back here. Nice, smooth actuation there. Apologize for the charge cables there, but yeah, really nice looking space here. Some interesting um, paint in here. So this is actually satin, which is quite strange. I don't see this very often on cars. Typically this is a gloss in here. So I'll have to check the other door jams and see if that's the case. I originally thought, oh, this is plastic, but it's actually satin paint. So that's really weird. I wonder why they went ahead and did that. Anyways, let's close this, see how this actuates down. Pretty smooth, can't really complain much about that. And moving along down the side, like look how tight these body lines are. That's fantastic. That's what you're wanting to see in a premium vehicle. This rear window is really interesting, especially how it's molded in here with all the seals. But man, this looks fantastic. All the shut lines up here, really, really looking good. Now coming down the door, rear quarter panel here, all the way down, look at how precise this is, not sticking out at all. This has been a huge area of complaint for me on the Rivian R1Ss that use this plastic, this textured plastic cladding on here, and it always sticks out there on the door. Kind of drives me nuts in all honesty. So yeah, just wanted to note that all of this looking fantastic up here, really, really tight. I'm, yeah, to be honest, very impressed so far with the exterior of the vehicle. Should be noted, I really don't like this though. We have white brake calipers. Now, this being an EV using the eye pedal inside, I don't think you're gonna be using the brakes a lot, but as you can already see here, look how filthy these things are. This is not like the surface coated brakes that you get from Porsche. These things are gonna be disgusting. So if you're getting one of these, definitely get those ceramic coated so you can help keep those clean. Like the wheel design on this, man, I just really, really like the exterior of the vehicle. It's just so stealthy, but classy. Yeah, really, really impressed with this thing. So coming around here, all of these body shuts look fantastic here. No complaints from me, which is honestly quite rare. Like the headlight integration here, how sleek and stealth those are. You get some nice daytime running lights. And then back to the front here, really, really impressed. So I think next, and this is where we're gonna spend most of our time, let's jump inside and see how luxurious or not luxurious this thing feels. The first time I opened this door, I just went, holy cow. I was pretty much blown away. Again, this is my first time ever being around a Genesis product. I've never even like done any research on these things. So I opened this up and I went, wow, this thing looks nice, but does it feel nice? And we're gonna get into that. So again, this is a prestige trim. So you get your Napa leather seats, you get a better stereo system, you get the suede headliner, which is really, really nice. I, I think it is well worth it. If you're gonna spend the money on this car, get the prestige pack. There's a few things though that really is quite strange to me. First off, we have the seats and this is where you're spending quite a bit of money probably in the Napa leather. And I don't know what it is about this specific leather they're using. Kyle actually alluded to it in his video over on Out of Spec Reviews that the leather feels greasy. It kind of feels cheap. I, I can't really put it into perspective until you sit here and touch it. It just, it doesn't feel amazing. It really doesn't. Um, and I think that's something to know throughout this whole interior. Now, I love the design of this seat. We have heated, cooled seats here as well. Love the perforation here. The stitching looks fantastic. Love this copper piping on here the use of aluminum, which is actually probably plastic here, but man, it looks extremely good. It just doesn't feel great. And I hear a lot of people and I talk a lot about this. So I've got a Tesla Model 3 long range with the white interior. And I get the question all the time, how the heck do you keep this thing clean? I gotta tell you guys, we are at a point in the automotive industry where synthetic, vegan leathers, these vinyl interiors are better than leather. And let me tell you why. From a detailer's perspective, this stuff wears way, way better than something like this Napa leather. 
This car has 1,400 miles. Look at the creasing already going on here. We've also got dye transfer from jeans, which Teslas do have, but they clean up a heck of a lot easier. I'll pull you over to this passenger seat here once we get a little later on in this video talking about more creasing going on there. Now, one thing that just struck me, white steering wheel. Now for me, if I were purchasing this car, not an issue. I clean my steering wheel, you know, every week, every two weeks. So I don't think it'd be an issue. But as Kyle alluded to as well, I've seen ID4s, the first edition ones with the full white leather steering wheel. They look so gross. They look terrible, terrible, terrible. After a couple thousand miles, if you're not maintaining this, this steering wheel is gonna be absolutely disgusting. Now, the actual material here feels pretty decent. I like the perforation here, but this as a detailer, your hands are typically here, nine and three. This area holds a lot of grease. You get in every one of these perforations, you start getting body oils, lotion, sunscreen, things like that. And they really get greasy. So keep that in mind. Now here on the steering wheel, I really like the layout, this nice stitching here. Again, we've got the Napa leather, looks fantastic. These buttons are really interesting being in white, but I really like the feel on these. They're not cheap feeling plastic. And I think I'll show you around the rest of the interior. They should have used this quite a bit more because this feels fantastic. Now coming down here on the steering column, this is like the weirdest texture ever. It's like, it almost looks like skin, if you will. It's very strange. It doesn't look that nice. Um, yeah, don't love that whatsoever. You know, the stocks here, we've got a lot of this aluminum, but it's really plastic here. The stocks feel fine. I wouldn't, you know, really say much more than that. Um, one thing though, that I love about this interior, the lack of piano black. You know, our Volkswagen ID4 has this huge piano black area here. Kia EV6 even has that here in the center console, but this is a way, way, way better implementation of that. So super big props there. Now we do have it here on the climate. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but moving over here to the door panel. Interesting thing that I noted on the build sheet of this car was it said that the dashboard was a leatherette material, which is interesting. So they use Napa leather here and I would assume in this area, uh, but the dashboard cover, the black pieces are leatherette. And in my opinion, this feels a heck of a lot better. Use that material down here. It would make things way better. But this door panel here, so I'm assuming this is the same. Leatherette feels better than this down here. I just, it's really weird the material choices here. This stitching looks incredible. Exactly matches the color of leather. It is perfectly precise. I have yet to find a stitch out of place. Really, really love that. Love the aluminum accent here. The door handles actually feel quite nice. Nice little tweeter grills here. We've obviously got memory here. Now, this is an interesting area and this is a very different textured kind of plastic. It feels a lot like this. The only issue that I am seeing here and feeling is that this is starting to get tacky. So I wonder over time how that's gonna wear. Now these buttons here, they look aesthetically nice, but I believe these are all plastic. These are not metal. They're not super expensive. They feel fine. I don't think they feel amazing. So definitely starting to get cheaper feeling as we move down the door here. I do like this metal piece as, as we go down here and this plastic grill looks fine. Interesting thing to note down here. So we've got more of this terrible plastic down here. This is actually like a soft touch. I believe this to be vinyl, but I think they should use this material down here. Would make it feel so much nicer. That is the kind of stuff that Audi, Mercedes, BMW do is using really nice materials on lower sections you're not interacting with. Now we have the Lexicon stereo down here. I honestly have never heard of this brand. You guys probably have. Moving down here, again, we've got a lot of this really textured black plastic trim. I really don't think it looks that nice. In my opinion, the floor mats look like they're out of a Nissan, like really, really cheap feeling. Um, same with down here. We've got this nasty feeling textured plastic. Really, really don't like that. But the top areas that you're interacting with, really, really nice. Also love the ambient lighting in this car. Really, really feels nice. Let me hop over here to the passenger side and talk a little bit 
about the seat that I was seeing over here and some more driver control options. So here we've obviously got memory seats on this side. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And over time, this can cause cracks. It can cause tears. It really doesn't look the greatest over time. So keep that in mind with this new, you know, synthetic leather. I think you guys are gonna start enjoying that stuff more. These also have probably the softest headrests in, you know, a sub $150,000 car. I'm thinking of Rolls Royces with pillows or BMWs. Some of their super high trim level ones have that. But yeah, aesthetically, really like the look of this. It's just when you start touching and feeling things, it's where it starts falling apart. Now, love the center console area here, except for one thing. So, we have two of these kind of scroll wheels here. And this is meant to control your nav system, your MMI. And a lot of the times you go to use this and you put the car in neutral while you're driving it. So really, I think over time, that'll be okay. Um, but yeah, I don't love that. Also here on this aluminum, this is very cheap feeling plastic. And it is getting that kind of staining to it. Now, if you maintain your car, keep it clean. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. You have volume knobs here. That feels fantastic in your tune. They are hard to find while you're driving. I like the use of actual physical buttons here. And then you have these dials for your climate that feel really nice with a digital display. So you're not always interacting with the gloss black, which I think is very rare for new cars in these days. So really, really like that. Air vents here feel fantastic. Nissan Aria, you need to adopt this design. If you guys have watched that video, they have these slats that are basically cut out here. Anytime you move that up and down, it completely takes that pristine strip across there and cuts it in half. It looks terrible. So this is the way to do it. Again, stitching, absolutely perfect. I do like the screen up there. Personally, don't love the infotainment here on Hyundai Kia Genesis vehicles. That's my personal opinion. You guys can definitely disagree. And moving here to the back, I'm curious to see how the back end of this vehicle is. This is one of my big gripes with companies. They put really nice feeling door panels here on the front, and then the back ones are just crap most of the time. They just put really cheap plastics here, and I'm happy to say this is not the case. First off, we have rear sunshades. I think this should be standard in any car over $50,000. Super nice to have, whether you have dogs or children in the back seat. I think that is really, really needed. Quickly tint the windows, but also be able to pull them down quickly. They don't need to be automatic. Having them manual, perfectly fine. My 2004, I guess it's 2005 Audi Allroad had those. So I think modern cars, we need to step that up. But materials, this feels great back here. Again, I would assume this is the leatherette. Great stitching here. Man, they nailed the stitching on this car and I'm so pleased to see that because I see a lot of cars, even Kia EV6 GT that I reviewed had some stitching issues that I wasn't so pleased with. This material back here, really interesting. I feel like this is the leatherette, whereas this is still Napa leather. I could be totally wrong, but for some reason, this feels exactly like this, where this is still that greasy, feeling material. I don't know what it is. I really wish I could put my finger on it and go, ah, that's why it feels like that. Again, down here, we have this more soft touch material. I think they should have used this material up here, but that's just being super nitpicky. I do need to mention the cup holders in this and the doors are the slimmest I've probably seen in the industry, like really, really narrow. So you people with your Stanleys ain't going in there. I can tell you that. Um, but moving here to the back seat again. So I think one of the biggest letdowns is the back of the seats. They look very cheap. We've got this really textured plastic here. Again, use this material. If you guys are trying to compete with the, the Germans, the Audis, the BMWs, the Mercedes, make these little improvements. And I think these cars would be way more suitable. But I don't have a ton of complaints here with the back seat. There's not an ample amount of storage. Now this seat is back in its um, you know, easy entry mode, if you will. So you do have quite a bit more space here, but it's not gigantic back here, if I'm honest. This is 
feels about the size of our Volkswagen ID4. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you're a bigger family, um, you know, with multiple kids, dogs may need something a little bit bigger. We've got manual seat controls here. I think those could look a little nicer. They look very cheap and plasticky. Again, really not digging the carpets in this car. This kind of, I don't know, shiny, I don't even know how to describe this. The piping around it looks gross in my opinion, just as a detailer and feeling this carpet just doesn't feel nice. Um, I think Tesla carpets feel a little worse. This is kind of in the middle, but not something again, like Audi, Mercedes, BMW. So again, we're getting into that place where this car kind of really fits into where it should. Now here, I really like this implementation back here for your rear seat controls. I don't like that the buttons are gloss black, which is kind of strange. Again, moving up here to the front, we have no gloss black buttons anywhere. Why not use those brushed aluminum plasticky even pieces? I think they look a lot nicer because immediately somebody touches those, they've got a fingerprint. Now I do like that we still have our displays in there with a nice knurled finish on the side. Looks great, but yeah, back here, reasonably good. We've got ample headroom. The seats are basically the same as the front. Just don't love this material. I like the design, the aesthetics of it really, really look nice. It, it looks premium, but it is not luxury. And I think that's a really interesting thing with this car. I know Genesis says that they are a luxury car company. I sent a photo of this to one of my friends in the car industry and he goes, oh, the Korean Bentley. And I go, yeah, not quite. This is just like a really, really nice Korean car. But in my opinion, this thing is not luxury, but very, very premium. So my overall thoughts and feelings of the electrified GV70. Really, really nice car. Something that I didn't mention in this is how quiet this car is. There is one car on the market which I rarely use the stereo system in, and that is the Audi e-tron. That car is like a bank vault, as Kyle calls it, and he couldn't be more true. You close the doors in that thing, you just float down the road. The one thing I like about this car over an e-tron is power. This thing is really, really quick. High 400 horsepower. I mean, this thing will roast an Audi e-tron off the line. Now, if you're getting into the e-tron S's, of course, that's a different story, but you're also bumping a lot more in price. So really, really impressed with this car. I think the suspension is nice and soft, but it's not fully customizable. It's obviously not on air suspension. Um, so I think if they're really going premium, we could have better ride quality, but it is really good. The car drives really, really nice. And overall fit and finish, I'm pretty blown away with the outside of it, to be honest. My first Genesis product now under my belt. And I think, man, it's a very compelling car. There's a lot to love about this thing, but there's also a lot of things you kind of wish it had. Now, if you were owning this particular car, do I think you would regret it? Absolutely not. And I think this car fits in exactly where it should. Like I've said multiple times now, there's a lot of people out there that it's like a Model Y, just not a car for me. I don't love the interior. And I think this is a great stepping stone instead of go going, you know, close to hundred grand for something like an Audi e-tron BMW iX. So really, really compelling vehicle. Very, very impressive here what Genesis has done, but I think there's still room for improvement. Anyways, thanks so much guys for watching another out of spec detailing video. We'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Bye-bye.